It's Friday, December 9th, and time for your Fabulous Today news update, so glad you could join us. The social partners are set to return to another round of talks today to hammer out an action plan to tackle rising food prices amid fears of shortages triggered by the slowdown in the global supply chain. And Prime Minister Mia Motley has signaled that government is prepared to intervene to cushion the impact on consumers since the spiraling costs of shipping and other issues are beyond the island's control. We are in the process also of meeting on Friday yet again, the third such meeting with the private sector to ensure that we can put in place those measures that are necessary to stabilize and to smooth out as much as possible access, recognizing that we may also have to play an intervention role with respect to some of the prices and costs because of that disruption. And the reality is that containers and shipping costs have gone right through the roof because of the scarcity of access, um, the scarcity that has predominated the, the food market in particular and the shipping with respect to containers. The Prime Minister made the comments and she delivered the 16th Patrick Emmanuel Memorial Lecture, forging a nation confronting new realities on Wednesday evening. As she outlined a wide-ranging plan for the island's development, Motley made clear that her government intends to further build out a new digital knowledge economy and announced a number of initiatives to come on stream. By the end of the first quarter of next year, we expect that all the major banking institutions that we have to have upgraded their internal systems and to go live on a real-time automated clearinghouse. Today, I signed the license as Minister of Finance for a new digital bank that will probably be operational in about six months' time. These things will mean that for the very first time, every person conducting business, no matter their scale, will be able to make and receive payments instantly. I am truly beyond excited by the boost that this will give to our entrepreneurs who go about their everyday business looking for more ease wherever possible. The UWI has deepened its partnership with the Inter-American Development Bank with the signing of a new Memorandum of Understanding. UWI Vice Chancellor Professor Sir Hilary Beckles says the new deal will allow the university to boost the region's response to pressing issues. This MOU focuses on institutional strengthening of the University of the West Indies to better enable it to serve this region on all of the issues, all of those matters that are frontally engaging us at the moment. Research, teaching and learning, institutional modernization, ranging from issues in respect to digital transformation through to matters of infrastructure for research in respect of climate change, in respect to social justice issues and gender equality, all of the issues that are relevant to us at the moment. Meanwhile, the IDB president noted that the bank is committed to partnering with the Caribbean in several areas to foster growth. Already, the UE-IDB partnership has fostered cooperation among several of the pillars of Vision 2025, including climate change, where we had a wonderful conversation of the impact that the work and the knowledge of this institution had in preventing thousands and thousands of deaths. And gender and health in regards to COVID, which was what we, the discussion we had on the work that was done here. And in this new phase of collaboration, we look forward to deepening and expanding our work. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines, and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine, and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated, and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80-year-old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living.
To regional news now, Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Farley Augustine, signals he is ready to get to work. In fact, he says his first order of business is to host a retreat with his executive to discuss the way forward. Chief Secretary Farley Augustine says the new Executive Council brings a fresh direction to Tobago. He noted that for the first time, this council has no one who once served in an executive council. This choice was made on purpose. I did not w want uh, folks with old attitudes uh, trying to transfer those old political cultures into the new executive that I will lead. However, that will also mean the downfall of that is that I will need my team members to come up to scratch almost immediately. And so there will need to be some internal training. Mr. Augustine said he looks forward to working along with the Prime Minister. He informed he had a brief chat with him, which he was pleased with. And in our interaction, he did say to me that, you know, he really hoped that we can work together, that we can do so in a cordial manner, and that, you know, we will both work in the best interest of the people of Tobago without any form of biases, any form of ill will, or anything of, of, of that sort. And I think that was an excellent uh, first. On the international front, the latest Canada food price report warns prices will climb by between 5 and 7% in 2022, adding nearly $1,000 a year to the grocery bill of the average family of four. You're already paying more for food, and the expectation is you'll be paying even more in 2022. Have you noticed prices going up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, meat especially. I think it's terrible. What are you going to do if everybody starts charging more? you got to pass it on to somebody, right? A family of four, two adults and two kids is on track to spend a little less than 15000 a year on food. That's an increase of nearly $1,000. Canada's food price report predicts overall food inflation will range between 5 and 7% next year. Restaurant meals and dairy expected to climb as much as 8%. Baked goods and veggies up to 7%. You'll get a bit of a break at the meat counter, though, with prices projected to go up 2% after bigger hikes this year. People really saw a difference at the grocery store. They were, uh, many were spooked. The report's author says it's the biggest forecasted increase since tracking began 12 years ago, and they've been pretty accurate in the past. The major drivers behind the increase, higher transportation costs because of energy prices and supply chain snarls, the cost of corn, wheat, soy, staples used in all kinds of food and animal feed continue to climb, and labor shortages translate to higher prices at the grocery store and on menus right across the country. Coupon app Rebe has seen a 23% spike in flyer views this fall. The most searched items, dairy and meat. Rebe director Mark Smith says people are putting in more effort to get deals. If the store in which they shop offers price matching, they will, they will take that proof of ad into the store and you know, price match at the cashier to, to get that lower price. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.